Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to go over it in a situation where many people have experienced, especially with people with older boats. What happens over time, especially when you're sailing in salt water, is that the aluminum parts can corrode. And when the aluminum parts corrode at where the upper spar and the lower spar meet at that junction and you have interlocking eye bolts, then the upper spar and the lower spar can separate. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the situations that this can happen and how to fix them. Now, a few weeks ago, I went to Fire Island with my friend and we were just cruising along and then my upper spar and the lower, and the lower boom separated. And I was like, okay, what happens? And I saw the nut sitting on the deck of the boat. I basically stopped the boat there and I tried to screw the nut back into the bottom. However, in the middle of the water, it was very hard to line up the interlocking bolts because they actually, the interlocking bolts separated from the upper and the lower spar. So what I did is I took some electrical tape, which I always carry in my PFD and a length of line, which I had about this much line. And I was able to put the interlocking eye bolts kind of together, but it wasn't enough to screw the bolt in. And I taped everything together and I lashed everything together. And to be honest with you, I haven't had time to fix it. And I've been sailing like that for about a month now. But now in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix that interlocking eye bolt. And if it's only the bolt that comes out, it just needs to be screwed back on. But I also have another situation where you're going to have corrosion on the spars, which will make the interlocking eye bolts come out of the spar and then you'll have separation. So if you're ever sailing along and this happens to you where you see the, the, the boom separate from the upper spar, the first thing you want to do is, is not panic because it's not the end of the world. However, the sail starts to get goofy and starts to, to creep up the boom and the spars tend to start to separate more and more as the sail creeps up the booms and the spars and it gets really actually hard to sail you got the upper front spar flopping around and it's just not good also if the lower boom starts to scrape your deck then you could damage your boom you could damage your deck you could also damage the sail because it's not it's not set correctly so the best thing to do is to try to fix it on the water, at least temporarily, so then you could continue to sail until you get to shore and fix it in a permanent situation. So that's why in my PFD, and I always wear a PFD when I'm sailing small boats, especially like a sunfish, which are made capsize, I carry a roll of electrical tape, just normal electrical tape, and a length of thin line. And I've used that thin line in many situations, either to lash my hiking strap after it broke, or uh, my gooseneck might have broken and I lash it together. And in this situation, I'm putting the upper spar and the lower spar together at the tack. So always keep something with you. Some people also keep a knife with them. So in this video, I'm gonna go over two ways to fix corroded spars that lose the interlocking eye bolts and they're separated. And before I get to the video, I'd like to thank all the subscribers who are making the channel grow. It's been showing nice growth and thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But if you have watched the channel and haven't subscribed yet, please press that button down there to subscribe and then you will never miss another video. And now to the video. So I mentioned before the one way, the simplest way that a upper and a lower spar can come about is that the, the nut that holds the interlocking eye bolts just gets loose and falls off the interlocking eye bolt. Ideally speaking, that's what you want because all you have to do is get that nut and screw it really back on. What I do in big races like the round shot the Ryland race where I don't have time to worry about things, I actually put electrical tape around those so it acts as insurance so I don't lose them. But there's two other ways that the upper and the lower spar get separated and mainly that's because of corrosion. And there's two ways to fix this, and I'm gonna go over in this video the two ways. So in a nutshell, what you can do is you can cut the end of the rotted spar and then drill new holes and put the end cap back on, the plastic end cap, that's one way. And then the second way is to just keep the corroded end of the spar and rotate the spar and drill new holes where the interlocking eye bolt will go into. Then you can fix it that way. So those are the two ways, to cut it or rotate it. There's a the pros and cons to cutting it and there's pros and cons to rotating it. And I'll go over those right now. If you're getting any value from this video, please smash that like button. So the first one I'll go over is cutting the end of the spar. 
So what you would need to do is remove the end cap, that plastic end cap. Now removing the end cap is not that hard if it just corroded and it came out because the end cap is probably off of it. So you would just take take the end of the spar and take a hacksaw. You can get a hacksaw at the, the hardware store. Uh, it's a really fine blade and the aluminum is pretty hard, but it can be done. I just did this one and it took me a few minutes to do it. So one of the pros about cutting it is that it looks neater. It just looks neater because now it looks like you have a, a new spar. When you rotate it, you're keeping the rotted part of the spar there. So some people might not like that. The second advantage to cutting the spar, and this is probably the biggest one, is that you can keep the same alignment on the end cap as you did when it before it broke. Now what I mean by this is that the sail uses the end caps to get put on the sail and they have to be in alignment because if you if you rotate the spar and you put the end caps in different planes then the sail is going to be twisted possibly. Now when you're cutting the end of the spar there's also a couple of cons. One is that it's a pain in the neck to cut a spar because it's, it's pretty hard. However, it can be done if you have a hacksaw and you take your time and don't cut yourself. I use also uh, glasses because I don't want a piece of metal in my eye. But it can give you a little bit of workout uh, cutting that. So working out is not the most worst thing in the world. Another con which most people will not notice, even the top level racers, is that it will shorten the spar. Now, if you take off the minimum, you're taking off about a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter, which is like that big. No, it's about that big. Now, does this change the measurements of where you put your halyard and your head? It, it very well can, especially if you take off more than the minimum. If you take off a half inch to an inch, that's definitely going to change the way the sail sets on there. So if you do cut the spar, you might have to move your halyard and you might move, have to move your head uh, afterwards, which is not that big of a deal. It's just retying the couple of knots. Now when you cut off a little bit of the spar, the rotted part, because the sail is shorter than the spar itself, you still got several inches to work with or a few inches. So I wouldn't hesitate to cut a spar to get it nice. The second way to do it is to not cut the spar and to rotate the spar to a new fresh piece of metal and then you rotate the end cap, you drill a couple of holes, and then you reinstall the end cap. Now when you do this, the, the pluses to that is that you don't have to cut the spar. So it's the same length, it's, it's arguably easier to do. But the main con for rotating the spar is that you have to rotate the other end cap at the same time, and in the same direction, because you want the sail to be along the same plane on the same position of the spar. You don't want it you don't want the head to be in the front and the, the tack to be in the back of the spar. It's just gonna twist and it's not gonna look good, it's not gonna sail well and you just don't want that. So when you have to move an end cap, there's usually a little pin in there that you might have to knock out with a real small nail and hammer it out and you could use that pin again or you could drill it out. And then after that's drilled out, you just knock out the end cap with the, with the hammer, light tapping of it. Be very gentle because you don't want to break the, the end plastic part. You could use a piece of wood and the hammer and then maybe a screwdriver to, to wedge it around and get that out. And then you could rotate the end cap. So there's your plus and minuses on cutting the spar versus rotating the spar. And now I'm gonna show you how to cut the spar and how to fix the end of the end cap uh, and the corroded piece. And I'm gonna show you how to fix the corroded end so you can go sailing. And once this is fixed, you could go sailing for years and years and years and not have issues with it. The best way to prevent fr this from corroding is to rinse your, your booms really well after uh, sailing, especially if you're in salt water. So prevention is the best medication, however, over time, salt water and metal, it's just gonna corrode. If you need any parts for repairing your boat, I'm gonna leave a couple of links down below where you could find the parts. So the main thing you wanna do when you're cutting the spar is you wanna keep the cut perpendicular 
and straight across the the boom or the upper spar. You don't want it at an angle. You don't want it. You don't want there to be a, a wedge shape. You want the the cut 90 degrees from the edge. What that does is because when you put the end cap in, the end cap is going to fit flush with the end of the spar. It just fits better. It looks nicer, and you don't have a gap uh, going along the end cap. I took a sharpie and I did the line where I'm gonna try to follow cutting it and a lot of times when I've cut and I've done this several times and I'm not a perfect uh, tube cutter mm. if you have a pipe cutter do it with a pipe cutter it'd probably be much easier um, so I used a hacksaw and I don't even think I had the, the proper blade for for metal but I, I did I did use it you want to make sure you cut it perpendicular not like this because then this will be crooked and the end cap will not fit flush. So make sure you put perpendicular. Start it off. It doesn't need to be exactly 90 degrees, but it helps. It's not perfectly perpendicular, but it'll, it'll work. So after several minutes, I got it cut off, and then there's going to be sharp, sharp edges to it. So I'm going to sand it down or file it down so it's nice and smooth, so it doesn't uh, rip anything on my sail, on the boat, or, or on my skin. And after that, there's a couple of different types of end caps. You have an end cap with a plastic attachment that you could attach your your head to or actually your clue and your out hole or there's going to be an end cap without these attachments now on the upper spar where the tack is that's generally a regular end cap without the without the plastic line holder if you know what they call that just leave a comment down below i, I really don't know what they call that it's the attachment that, that you could tie your head to. On the bottom, it, that's where you can, that's where you're gonna be controlling your rotation. So make sure the lower boom, you wanna have the interlocking eye bolt aligned so that your boom blocks are going to be underneath your spar as you want them. And that's really what you want. If you have Cunningham cleats or outhaul cleats, as long as your boom blocks are in the correct position, everything else should fall into place. So you get a nice new piece of fresh metal and you push about here and the hole is in the middle. So I'm going to estimate about that's where my hole should be. Once I get that hole and it's in alignment, then I drill through and then I go through the second hole on the other side. And once that's done and, and I can confirm that's where I want them, then I can go to a larger drill bit. Once the interlocking eye bolt is there, then you're pretty much home for it and you just put everything together, you tighten up that nut on the interlocking eye bolt, and then you are pretty much done. Then you tie your sail together, back together, you halyard if you need to tie it, and then you head it if you need to tie that. So when you're going to do the second method, which is the rotation, all you have to do is, this is great if you don't have any way to cut. You don't have a pipe cutter and you don't have a, a hacksaw. You take the end cap, you rotate it to a new piece of metal. Same thing with the cutting edge. You estimate where that hole is, and then you put a couple of marks on the spar. You do a really thin pilot hole, and you find that hole. And once you get that hole in, you go to the other side, you drill the hole, expand it so you can put the interlocking eye bolt in. Now, when you do this, you have to remember to rotate your other end cap. So to remove the other end cap, you knock out the pin, or you drill it out. But when you gotta remember, when you're taking out this pin, you gotta replace it with something. You could replace it with the same pin, or you could put a really thin screw in there, either an aluminum screw or a metal screw, and that kind of keeps it from jiggling out. You can <clears throat> you could try to use the pin if you could find it and if you could keep it in place. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comments section below. I read all of them and I appreciate it. So there you have it. Thanks for watching the video. Please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you know when we come out with a new video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you on the water. Here we are.
are sailing to Fire Island. It's my dry bag, got a little anchor. It's my friend Kenny on the red rocket. 